Okay, so we are deep into the back nine, uh, the home stretch, if you will. This next topic is uh, incredible, especially because of 2020. I mean, I've heard the term uh, force majeure, <laughs> I mean, unprecedented. I mean, you think about some of the external dependencies that we might have taken for granted over the last several years. Uh, this has been uh, a lightning strike, to say the least. But of course, out of that, uh, video has emerged as being such an integral part of communication, business development, and the surge in popularity and adoption uh, through the roof. So Laura and Sharon uh, are experts at all things video. Uh, the nuts and bolts, the art and science, whatever you want to say. And, and I, I look at it in terms of three distinct sort of components. There's the technical component, uh, just the equipment, uh, lighting, sound, all of that. And then, of course, there's the actual production of the video, post-production, editing, razzle-dazzle, right? And then, of course, there's compliance and navigating through that. And Laura and Sharon uh, have mastered all three in a turnkey format. And based on the dual track of both Evergreen, you know, what's, what stays present uh, in your uh, digital footprint, but also your video blogs, if you happen to uh, be involved in that or, or maybe thinking about that. So let me just give you the introduction here because uh, Sharon and Laura are gonna talk about video marketing, of course, how to get recording and start converting prospective clients into actual clients, and then ultimately advocates. So video can help you get more leads booked, okay? So you think about the funnel and the pipeline, and then when you use video the right way, you can convert those prospects to clients and then turn those clients into great source of referrals through advocacy. So are you ready to kickstart your video marketing strategy? Idea Decanter co-founders Laura Garfield and Shara Gotula will share with you their top scripting tips, really important, tried and true gear recommendations, which is obviously behind the scenes, but essential. How to prepare for the shoot and the secret to the right setup for recording. So uh, I, and by the way, if you're going to embrace this or you wanna find another gear in the whole world of video, watch uh, Sharon and Laura's video that we did in the May Summit too, because these two uh, go hand in glove. Okay, so Laura, Sharon, take it away. Thanks, Duncan. Imagine for a moment a circle. Right here is something that can help you book more leads. When you create it and put it to use, those leads convert to prospects. Keep following that circle around, and that tool you're using works on clients too, helping them tell others about you, leading you right back to the top and those new leads. What's that tool? Video. And today we're going to help you create your own video marketing strategy. I'm Laura Garfield, co-founder of Idea Decanter. And I'm co-founder Sharon Gatula. Our virtual team works with advisors from coast to coast in the US and Canada, helping people just like you use video as a powerful marketing tool. If you've been thinking about recording some videos but haven't gotten it done, we're here to help. So many advisors are afraid of looking unprofessional or don't know where to start, and that gets them stuck. Are you stuck? Today, we're going to give you some of the tools of our Connect with Clients formula that you can put to use right now. So stop making excuses and start making videos. Before our session is over, you'll have tips and tricks that the pros use. And if you're ready to record, I'll show you how you can get your hands on two free resources. But first, a big thank you to Duncan and the whole team at Pareto. It's a pretty big job to pull a summit like this together. 
And a thanks to our friends over at Advisor Protocol who do such great work bringing your Pareto marketing pieces to life. We're honored to be a part of it and we are excited to be here with you. Kickstarting video can be hard. You might need a jolt to get you moving. Let's try a dose of reality. Did you know video is the number one form of media used in content strategy? Now overtaking blogs and infographics. What kinds of videos are companies making? This comes from a survey of financial services as well as other industries. While well, they're making promotional videos and brand storytelling, those are the most common types of video. But those are just stats. Here's the story behind them. People watch you in a video and feel like they know you a little better. That's important when you're in the business of building trust. Get personal by telling stories and you'll amplify the connection. And it's one thing to say it, it is another to show it. There's a difference between an advisor telling you he lives in the same house where he grew up and showing him walking in the front door while he narrates the story about why his family is so important to him. It really is true, seeing is believing. And couldn't we all use a few extra hours in our day? Video allows you to save time because you can record it once and use it to connect with many. Almost everyone has a video camera in their pocket, but that's only one piece of the gear puzzle. Pre-2020, when we traveled across the country filming, we traveled with a couple hundred pounds of lighting, cameras, and microphones. But you're not going to need all of that. We're going to share some of our picks, but first, I want to share one of my absolute favorite portraits from a French photographer from the early 1900s. This is the actress Sandra Bernhardt, photographed by the first celebrity photographer, Nadar. This was shot entirely using window light. Pretty cool, right? So your first lighting equipment comes free of charge. It's the sun. Now, Nadar didn't just let direct sun burn in on Sandra. He had white curtains to diffuse the light. It could have been a north window. And he's in Paris. It's gray a lot there. When using natural light, the key to beautiful light is soft and diffused. But maybe you don't have a window where you want to shoot. We recommend these newer LED ring lights that we use with Idea Kit. They run just over $100 and come with a stand and iPhone clip. What you don't want is LED for photography. I tested one out recently that was too good to be true, and guess what? It was. The light had this built-in fan that made just enough noise to be audible on video. And speaking of audio, check out this cute iPhone video kit I saw at the Apple store. I so want one. It's perfect for B-roll, that pretty cover video that we use to help tell your story. But for capturing your voice, you don't want that shotgun microphone, the one that looks like the furry thing. First, it's going to be too far away from you and your audio is going to sound echoey. And second, it's going to pick up all the ambient noise in the room and you don't want that. For clean, clear audio, what we recommend is a lav mic. It's discreet and the sound is focused on what you're saying, not the rest of the room. For as little as $30, you can get yourself a pretty good quality lav mic. But for $100, you can get a really good lav mic for your smartphone. We use the Rode Smart Lav with an extension cable so that we can get far enough away from the phone. It makes a big difference. Most people can put up with shoddy visuals, but if they struggle to hear what you're saying, they're not gonna stick it out to the end. And to not have shoddy visuals, a sturdy stand and iPhone adapter is a small investment that goes miles. This allows you to step back, relax, and deliver your script. Speaking of relaxing, lean back and let me take you back to a cold day in January 2001. I was in Washington, D.C. covering the inauguration of George W. Bush. 
I was a reporter for a CBS station in Omaha, Nebraska, but I'd interviewed the candidates on the campaign trail, and that gave me enough cred to ask my boss, the news director, if he would send me to D.C. to report on the inauguration. It would be my first trip on the road out of town covering anything. I remember him sizing up the idea and telling me, you can only go if you do a great live shot. No problem, I thought. This was going to be the biggest live shot of my career, my Katie Couric moment. Of course, I was nervous, but I was also really excited. That night, I arrived at the bureau and took the elevator up to the top floor. When those elevator doors opened, I ignored the butterflies in my stomach and stepped into the newsroom. After asking around, I tracked down the producer to find out how to get to the studio. He said, you're going to the roof. All our live shots are up there tonight. Okay, I squared my shoulders and climbed that flight of stairs. This was my shot. I was not going to blow it. Opening the heavy metal door, I was met with a line of a dozen or so other reporters like me from across the country. I got in line and waited for my turn to step up in front of the camera. The butterflies were kicking up. We were kind of like an assembly line. One reporter would go and then as soon as they were clear, the next would take the mic. Finally, it was my turn. I plugged in my earpiece and could suddenly hear the anchors back in the studio in Omaha reading their pitch to me. Laura, it's been an exciting day in the nation's capital. I started to answer, but one second in, the words I just said blared in my ear. I had a constant delayed echo chamber of each word I said, and I was totally thrown. I stumbled, I stammered, I tried to read my notes, but it was snowing and the snow was melting on my reporter's notepad, the words all blurring together. It was a train wreck. If YouTube was what it is today, this live shot debacle would have gone viral. At the end, after I somehow pitched it back to Omaha, the cameraman said, sorry, your director forgot to put your audio in mix minus. Next time, just pull out your earpiece. I held it together until I got down to the deserted lobby. Then I sat down on a chair and sobbed. If you're scared to get in front of the camera, if you're scared of looking stupid or silly, I get it. I've been there. I thought that inaugural live shot was going to end me. But I survived and moved on to continue climbing the news ladder to CBS News in New York and then CNN in Atlanta. And thankfully, I never had an on-camera disaster that came close to that one. We know that facing down a camera puts you in a vulnerable place and a lot can go wrong. And we're here to tell you that you can't let that vulnerability hold you back. To record with confidence starts with the right story and then the right tools to step in front of the camera. Are you ready to learn our seven secrets to good scripting? It starts by getting personal. Stories are what connect us. There's nothing more memorable than getting personal. What will you remember about me a month from now? Probably that I really screwed up that inaugural live shot and I survived. When you're starting a script, don't hesitate for a moment to get personal. But here's the catch. Once you've told your story, you need to make it about them, the viewer. We call it the WIIFM or what's in it for me. Think of your viewer as an egomaniac. We all want it to be about me. So make sure once you've talked about you, you bring it back to them. One clear way to make it about them is to use the you. That means avoid referring to the viewer in the third party. So forget they or my clients. You see the power of video is that it is one to many when you're communicating, you only have to record it once and it can get delivered to many. But there's a flip side to video. It's also really one-on-one. -on -one. You're talking to a single person on the other end of an internet connection. They may be at their desk, on a tablet, or most likely these days on their phone. 
but it's just one person watching, you can make them feel seen by using the you. Next, start strong. Think of the opening line of your script as your prime real estate. In video, you have a fraction of the time to connect as you do when you are in person. If you don't catch your viewer's attention in the first 10 seconds, they are likely to just roll on. Never waste that time with an introduction. Never start out. I'm Laura Garfield, co-founder of Idea Decanter. You've just wasted that 10 seconds. Get right to your viewers' needs. Here are a few ways you can start out. Try asking a question like presenting it, do you ever? And then giving a perspective or share a surprising fact. That's a great way to catch attention. The next most important real estate after you're open is the call to action or CTA. Brene Brown says clear is kind and that sure applies to your CTA. Clearly tell your audience what's next. That could be an offer to set up a call. You could drive them to a specific URL. Remember, your CTA doesn't all need to be scripted. It's much more effective to talk about the call and then put your phone number on the end card or closing full screen than it is to speak your phone number out loud. Stephen King has talked about the phase of his editing process he calls kill your darlings. With video, you have to be a vicious murderer. That's because you just don't have much time. How many times have you clicked on a video only to see it was 12 minutes and you were like, nah, I don't have time for that. Our guidelines are three minutes or less. Two is even better. How do you know how long it is? Well, you can pretty much figure that about 150 words is a minute in record time. All you have to do is the math on your script. One thing that's clearly different when you're recording a video is that you can add visuals. Why bother? You're actually doing your viewer a favor. Adding in visuals and graphics that support what you're saying allows you to fully leverage the power of video. Now, I wanna show you a video that puts many of these seven secrets to work. See if you can spot them in action. A life well lived is living your life with passion. For me, one of them is hunting. Imagine you're headed out for a fall hunt. You've got to pick the right shells. 12 gauge, 20 gauge, 410. You need a four shot for turkey, six for rabbit, seven and a half for pheasant, lead or nickel, waterfowl, upland bird. The choices are endless. But picking the right one is easy if it's your passion. Our business passion is helping your business succeed. Nearly every successful business has or should have a business retirement plan. We love the puzzle of putting the right plan together at the right stage for your business. As a business owner, is it your goal to put money aside for your own retirement? Defer as much income as possible to reduce your current taxes? Do you want to provide incentives for your current employees to grow with your company? Or do you need to attract new employees? Just like there's a best use for each type of shotgun shell, each of these business goals has its own unique strategy that can meet your needs. And it's our passion to design and monitor the best plan for your business. And just like those shells, every plan is different. There are SEPs and SIMPLES, 401ks, profit sharing, safe harbor, auto enrollment, auto escalation, you name it. And then there's forms and rules. Form 5305, 5500, 5498. There's endless deadlines. For me, picking the right one is easy because it's my passion. If you're looking for a firm that's passionate about keeping you on target, check out Columbus Capital. Jim packed a lot of secrets into that script. Here are a few that stood out. He got personal. He's an avid hunter and fisherman. So are many of his clients and his target audience. This story is a bullseye for them. Did you notice the clear CTA? He told viewers to come and check out Columbus Capital, and then he shared the URL without reading it out loud. 
and he had a lot of visuals and graphics to bring his story to life. All of those help keep your viewer engaged. When it's time for you to step in front of the camera or phone, it can feel daunting, especially for the first few times. We joke all the time that your first video is going to be your worst video. Now that doesn't mean it's going to be terrible, but we know from experience, once you go through the process, it opens your eyes to what's missing from your performance and also what's possible with editing and creative graphics and cover video. Today, we wanna to share our tips on upping your delivery. What we wanna teach you is how to record with confidence. You might still have butterflies, but here's how to make sure you're doing it right. Making a good video takes more than planning your story and pushing a red button and talking. What else is important here besides your message? How you look, how you sound, all of this is the beauty of a visual medium. There's a huge difference in the amount of information your viewer gets that you can't deliver in written text. Have you ever sent an email that gets totally misinterpreted? What's missing there? It's tone, right? In video, you have tone, facial expressions, body language, all to help you deliver your message. Did you know your brain receives 60,000 times more information per second when you're watching a video than when you're just reading text? Every day, we answer questions from advisors of how to look their best on video. And here are some of the most frequently asked questions we get. Number one, what am I going to wear? There's no hard and fast rules here, but let's talk about some don'ts. First, no small patterns or stripes, especially if you're moving around in the video. They tend to vibrate and create, and create moiré patterns. We recommend no logos, unless you're wearing your own branded shirt. If you have Nike or Reebok or any of these corporate brand logos on your shirts, it's just going to compete with all of your branding that's in the video. And then no loud, clanky jewelry. This isn't so much a visual issue, but an audio issue. If you move around and you have bangles on, that audio is going to click, pick up those clicks. And then this might seem weird, but no white shirts. Now, if we were in person filming you, a white shirt would not be an issue, but if you are filming with a phone, it's just gonna overpower the exposure meter. So now, here's some do's. First of all, a tailored jacket can do you a world of good. One, it's form fitting, so you're not adding on some extra poof in your clothing. And number two, it hides that microphone really well, especially if it's a dark color. One thing that could be fun to consider is bringing in some brand colors into your wardrobe for your video. This is a nice subtle way of increasing your brand presence without it screaming out at people. You could consider wearing a tie as part of your brand color or maybe some earrings. And then my go-to for anything whether it's video or photography is a nice neutral palette with a pop of color and then don't undervalue the confidence boost you get by wearing something you love and then last but not least we have what's called the 20 percent rule this means 20 percent nicer 20 percent more pressed maybe 20 percent more expensive and even 20% more tailored or fitted than what you might normally wear in real life. All of this comes across as very professional and polished on video. So now that you look great, here's some, let's talk about your delivery. Video is up close and personal, so you don't need to project like you're on stage and shouting out to the back row. Don't forget you have a microphone. You always want to slow down your talking. It's easy to feel nervous when you're in front of the camera, so you tend to speed up and talk faster because you just want to get through that script. But the audience is not going to be able to keep up. So you want to slow down and pace yourself. 
Here's a pro tip straight from the newsroom. Before you start, say three, two, one, lowering your voice register with each number. By doing this, you start at a lower register so that you have room to come up as you talk. Maybe you find you have a little shake in your voice. We have a couple of tips. One of our favorites is from a yoga instructor called square breathing. So with this, you breathe in for four, you hold it for four, you exhale for four, you hold it empty for four, and then you breathe in for four again. By doing this and counting, you slow your breath down and it calms your nerves. Some other things you can do are some tongue twisters or even singing. It helps warm up your vocal cords and gets you ready to deliver your script. And then don't forget to move naturally. If you stay stock still and read your script, you're gonna look robotic. You wanna move your shoulders and hands like you're talking across the table from somebody. And then last but not least, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's video, it's not live. You can cut it. So just work on that troublesome paragraph over and over again until you get it right. And then we will cut it in for a perfect video and nobody is the wiser. Another question we get a lot is, where am I going to shoot? What kind of background do I want? Now, we think simple and clean is probably better than cluttered with a lot of personality. If you look at David and Matt here, where do your eyes go? With David's, my focus goes right to his logo. I can barely see him in the corner. And if you're filming with a phone, your phone's gonna wanna focus on that text, not you. Matt's image is cleaner, you focus on him, and the background's white and clean with maybe just a little bit of texture for interest. Another thing to consider is should I stand or sit? We always recommend standing because when you stand and deliver your script, you have more energy, you're less slouchy, and you have more of a commanding presence. And then last but not least, quiet on the set. As the saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. The cleaner audio you start with, the better your audio will be in your final video. Video is a multimedia platform. This is how the magic happens. We take your message, your delivery, and marry it with visuals, graphics, and music to make a marketing piece that is larger than the sum of its parts. We've thrown a lot at you in 30 minutes, and I hope we've motivated you to kickstart your video marketing strategy. Before we go, I'd like to give you a peek into our remote video service called Idea Kit. We use it to make hundreds of videos each year with financial advisors like you. And we used it to make Jim's video that you watched earlier. Our process starts with shipping you the gear. It's a light stand or ring light, a C-clamp for an iPhone, and a clip-on lav mic with cables and adapters. For your remote record session, we use an app that's kind of like FaceTime. We help you choose your background, get your lighting right, run your mic check, and then we coach you through your record session. We can even turn your screen into a teleprompter so you can read your script. When the recording is done, we pull those clips off your phone into the cloud so we can start editing them right away. The post-production process is all on us. Our editing team lays in a music bed, builds custom captions, color and audio corrects, and then adds visuals to bring your story to life. That's how Idea Kit works. And let me tell you about those two free resources that can help you kickstart your video intention. Resource number one is our formula for better video. In this video, Sharon and I don't just tell you what to do to record your story, we show you how to do it, from setting up to lighting your shot and reading from the teleprompter. There's a lot we pack in there. To get the video, just go to ideadecanter.com forward slash formula. Now, if you'd like some expert guidance getting started, resource number two is a great next step. You can book a complimentary video strategy session where we talk about your history so far with video marketing and your goals for the future. 
you will walk out with one or more strategies you can put to use as you launch into video marketing. And if you'd like to help implementing those strategies, we can talk about what it's like to work together. If you want this resource, visit our website, ideadecanter.com, and click schedule a call in the top right-hand corner. What are you waiting for? Video to stop being a trend? A better, more personal way to connect? Maybe robots to do it for you? Stop making excuses and start making videos. Because the sooner you do, the sooner you can start here on the circle and use video to move your business ahead. Duncan, back to you. <laughs> okay, Laura, Sharon, great job. And uh, it occurred to me that I break a lot of rules, but uh, I'm sure what you're outlining there are guidelines, parameters, and you just sort of work them around the individual personality. But um, you know, I mentioned evergreen videos. These are the videos that are on your website. They're kind of part of your landing page. They're your tip of the spear. One of my favorite videos that I've seen our clients create are variations on basically the positioning around what makes us different. So just imagine doing a video and you start off and say, hey, thank you for visiting our website. You were probably introduced to us by a friend or a a uh, professional relationship and it's not uncommon that we'll meet somebody for the first time and they'll just ask us straight up what makes us different so let me just get to the point it's our people our practice and our process and then through the rest of the couple of minutes of that video you outline the credentials and the calling and the sense of purpose of your people you outline the client experience created by the practice and you talk about the process and how it puts every piece of the financial puzzle together to give your clients the complete picture. Video, as you heard, there must be brevity and specificity. And I also want it to be proprietary, meaning the things that you're talking about are not sort of generalities. You can only get your value from you. And I want that represented in your evergreen videos. Um, again, those evergreen videos build predisposition and awareness in advance of you meeting someone for the first time, which is really powerful in your social dynamics around uh, LinkedIn, of course, but you might be Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever the case may be. But they're just not a billboard. It's professional contrast. You're not just saying, here I am. It's not, you know, about how long you've been in the business and what you do. It's what your value does and what it is those people want and how you get them there. Now, on the blog videos, that's the stream, the integra uh, inter um, incremental progression of your videos. Those are so powerful for competitor-proofing clients, capturing money in motion, and really um, accelerating the relationship cycle around introductions from strategic partners. And from a prospective client experience, again, I've talked about it already, but I'll just add to it. That, that bridge between no man's land, between intent and consent. Okay. You, you might've heard me say in the past, like it, it's, if I'm a prospective client, it's easy for me to do business with you. It's just easier not to. It's just easier for me to revert to the status quo. So put the odds in your favor. Build predisposition. Build that uh, point of difference. And um, take advantage of that video strategy session because I got to tell you something. Most people who've embraced video and are now just incredibly comfortable and effective with it, in the beginning, I said to them, what's holding you back? And I could just tell, it was comfort. It just seemed so big, it seemed so intimidating. They lacked the confidence in terms of their own ability to, to pull it off, and they didn't want to be embarrassed. Let idea to canter just push you completely at ease. And uh, you'll have video loaded and rolling in 30 to 60 days. And you'll just get better with every single uh, episode you do. And uh, you'll look back and go, I should have done that sooner. But that's all good.
All right, so thanks very much for that. And uh, we're gonna move on to the last component, which is me. There was a time when your technical ability, just your core competency was enough. Today, it's a minimum requirement. Going forward, you've got to find creative ways to balance high tech with high touch. As you know, client relationships are dynamic. Critical life events, moments of truth, and milestones occur in your client's life as the relationship unfolds. You've got to find creative ways to pay tribute. Birthdays, anniversaries, and other celebrations require that you send a thoughtful, tasteful card to show them that you're paying attention. And it goes deeper. Think about how you welcome a new client as part of your onboarding process. Think about how you say thanks for an introduction when you receive a referral. And even beyond that, cards that have symbols that explain and show your clients not just what your value is, but what it does. Our friends at Lavish Cards have created an impressive array of very tasteful greeting cards and I encourage you to visit lavishcards.com. There are no better cards in terms of impact and lasting shelf life.